Hello and welcome friends, I'm Philip Magnus and this is my Lords of Uncreation review. Sit back and relax as I tell you how it really is quite infuriating. How good Tchaikovsky, Adrian Tchaikovsky that is, is at this whole writing thing. Although I suppose that could be right about the other Tchaikovskys as well. Mostly with music, not with writing, but we'll move on from that. Lords of Uncreation marks a final exclamation mark. A bit of tautology for you, to what has become a favourite trilogy of mine in the space opera genre. There is little I could tell you in this book review that I haven't already said about the Final Architecture trilogy elsewhere. Not without spoiling the delightful series of twists and turns that punctuate this final journey alongside characters Idris, Solis, Chris, Olian, Timo, Kittring... Agent Javier Mundi, and others. It takes a lot for the hegemony to break its non-interference claws, yet the machinations certain elements of the Parteni and Hugo government force the advanced federation of alien species, led by the inscrutable Essiel, to throw a real fit. Now, the Perteni and Hugo governments, if you haven't seen my previous reviews, are two of the, let's call them, biggest factions of humanity. The Hugo government is really the main body of humanity, a council of all surviving human worlds after the loss of Earth, whereas the Perteni are genetically a genetically engineered race of warrior angels shall we call them. They've got a bit of that Warhammer 40k Sisters of Mercy DNA going through them, and if I know Adrian Tchaikovsky, he probably drew some inspiration from there, because he is, as far as I know, a bit of a Warhammer 40k nerd, which is lovely. Anyway, the first half of the novel deals with threats to the fragile detente held together by a former Hugo spy and the sheer bloody threat of the Unspeakable Aklu, the razor and the hook. I love that, Alien. Never have I loved the space gangster as much as I have loved this one. And his even more audacious protégé, Olitimo, the protégé in question, her connection to Aklu gains a whole new dimension that makes up for one of the emotional centerpieces of the entire novel and series around it. Among my favourite descriptions of a character probably ever written is this one. Quote, Olian Timo was harder to get rid of than a venereal disease working for the Hugh tax office. That was quote. Brilliant. In fact, what makes this final book in the trilogy so excellent is that every one of the main characters I recounted above receives a satisfying end to their narrative arc. So do most side characters. I do not wish to go in-depth with all of them, as I have a tendency to write long analyses of Tchaikovsky's books, a tendency that recently earned me a master's in English literature. Bragging, not complaining. I'll just underline how happy I am with where Idris and Solis and Chris all end up. Similarly, my sorrow for some of these characters that didn't make it is genuine. The loss of friends, human and unhuman, unhuman, inhuman, hits hard. As always, Tchaikovsky makes the reader feel for life forms you don't expect to ever feel for. That's one of the many reasons I keep coming back to his works. Every one of the three novels in the Final Architecture trilogy had a slightly different feel to it. Shards of Earth saw the lost family I have come to know and love, shaped through trials by fire, blood and iniquity. Eyes of the Void did not leave behind this sense of importance to the small-scale lives of our protagonists, but doubled down on the scale of the threat, the scale of this universe itself. Laws of Uncreation is high-octane throughout, never for a moment accepting any kind of status quo, with the universe imploding around these characters without, well, a moment's respite. I will miss this universe. I will miss its characters, both those lost along the way and those who manage to stick the landing and get their just desserts. However, 
I don't feel that anything was left unresolved that should have been expanded upon. And isn't that a great feeling? Lords of Uncreation examines the mysteries so central to the series and explores them fully. The architect's nature is given a place to shine. Their masters are revealed. And so are the countless mysteries that have made of Unspace a delightful world-building element to speculate on and read about. I did trope check posts for the previous two books on my blog and hope to do one for this third one too. However, I couldn't stuff my copy of Lords of Uncreation in my luggage as I went home for the summer, so it might have to wait for a little bit. There's more to be said about this book in series, but it will have to wait a bit. Bummer. The main thing is, you'll enjoy this book and series if you like space gangsters that make Jabba the Hutt look like a big old pushover, you're into fully realised worlds with deep existential threats and universe-ending narratives, or you just love lawyers wielding knives and that kind of thing, lawyers using words and sharp things to starve people to death seems to be a theme with my book reviews lately. I don't mind it. And more, probably. At any rate, if you enjoyed this book review, let me know. Maybe check the videos I have on the Final Architecture's previous two books in the trilogy. Don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe for more, and uh, I will see you next time. But before I do, answer me this. Have you read any of Tchaikovsky's works? Are you going to? The answer is yes. And um, what are you reading right now? Tell me. Make my day. Yeah? Yeah. I'm Philip Magnus, you're not. I'll see you again next time. Bye!